Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with Radical Reggie. What's up, buddy? Ah! How we do it? And today we pretty much it's been nine months since we did our last pickups videos, and we have a lot of stuff that we got to show you guys. So I'm very excited to be here. Very excited to show you a lot of the stuff we acquired over that nine month period, and uh, I think you guys are gonna be really excited. Yeah, I I've got some stuff here that I well again some holy grail things I never thought I'd own. <laughs> right. Old and new. So, all right, dude, ready for this? I'm ready. Let's take a look. All right, dude, I forget who went first last time. Um, hey, that's okay. I'm gonna go first this time, so okay. I'm gonna start out strong. So, okay. I got this item. No, I have not seen anything he's, he's no, shown. No, not yet. Here. I'm gonna surprise you with this yeah, one. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, there's a company out there called Project Games Retro, Project Retro Games, excuse me. And I got this from them. This is the Tales of Fantasia uh, collection for the PS1. Game is fan translated, and it comes with this collector's edition. But not only does it come with this collector's edition, it comes with its own PS1 as well that they made. So, uh, pretty cool stuff here, as you can see. Um, wow. Tales of Fantasia never got officially English translated for the PS1. So, uh, some fans had translated it. And the company actually put the game on a disc so you could play the game in English. Now, you do need a modded console to play it, but still, a lot of people know how to mod their PS1, so you're good to go. But everything huh. looks like... like like it, like it would have if it came out back in the day. So long, long case and everything like yeah. that. So, wow, that um, box is really nice. Yeah, yeah, and and the PS One in there. Like I, lo I love how they put that together. That was a total surprise when I saw that. I was like, <laughs> dude, wow, they, they, they're, they're, they're making it happen. So, um, definitely check them out, guys. Huh. A lot of good stuff from them. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still like just crazy about this. And not only did it come with this. Um, wow, but not only did it come with its own console. It came with the anime as well. They put the anime oh. on the VHS. So oh that, really? Yeah, pretty crazy, right? On a VHS. <laughs> yeah, because they had a four um, OVA anime that came okay. out, and so they decided to put it on on a, on a VHS. So bust out your VCR players, but uh, yeah, pretty cool. Dude, my my uh, VHS player is it, it's squeaky, mm. like it barely plays movies anymore. It makes me sad. I need to have it fixed or repaired or greased up or something. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with it. I don't even know where mine is at, man. Well, I, I, they're getting I, so old. You know, yeah, you know, no one talks about VHS anymore. Well, I mean, there's some hardcore collectors out there. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff like that at stores like Goodwill and Value yeah. Village. Oh, yeah, VHS, totally. But, yeah, you never hear, like, too many people talking about it anymore. So, huh. I'm like, ah, VHS. But well, okay. Is that? So, for me, uh, you and old, I'm going new. So, this is a Resident Evil 4 remake. Yes. Bro, I got mine the other day. Barely got to play it. Ah, I want to play it right now. Yeah, yeah. So, just so you guys know, this video is coming out. Well, we're filming this video literally like a couple days after and this came, came out. out. Yeah, yeah, so I, I had no idea you. I, I I suspected you picked it up. Oh yeah, of course, man, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, so I played it a bunch last night. I mean, I man, dude. So first of all, I mean, it's beautiful, and and I love that they're they're changing some of the the stuff that we take for granted because we played so much the older version yeah this one is, is kind of crazy because if you remember in the original game there was a wolf that you rescue in the beginning well that wolf in this version he's he's pretty much toast as soon as it's, you see him it's funny you mentioned that because a lot of people are like well, what what happened to the dog or the wolf you know in the beginning i uh, you have i played a little bit further along in the game mm -hmm. no spoiler uh oh uh, okay. but but You'll be happy later on in the game. Really? Okay. Yes. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So that that's a great example of that, though. Right. Where they they knew people would be looking for that, mm -hmm. and they changed it. But then later on in the game, they you'll you'll like it. Okay. It's good. cool. It's good, cool. Good to know. Yeah. Uh, but going the game is like compared to the original. I, this is the definitely the definitive way to play this game. They, yeah. They fix a lot of issues that weren't really that bad in the original game, but. Yeah. I gotta tell you this, the villagers are pretty insane in this one. They are smart as heck. It, they know. are. Yeah. I, I, especially in the beginning, whenever you just have to survive for a little while. Yeah. And I was just like running, oh my God, I was like barely like, when is this gonna end? I'm like, you know. Seriously, they try to block you in, you know, like, yep. you know, it's, it's crazy, so. Also too, if you notice that they're filling in some of the backstory of a, a little bit of like, um, of, of like the, the cult a little bit mm -hmm. and and I guess and I haven't gotten there yet but also some of the relationships between um some of the characters that you run into so, okay so that's what kind of the intro is a little when they show a little bit of the yes. intro of the cult so that's they're trying to show yes. you like a little 
and and okay. you and you're I guess you're gonna get a little bit more. I'm only on chapter six as a. I mean, I literally have only played it a day, uh, literally last night. So um, I am loving it. Okay, loving it. So right on. Yep. Okay. Um, next item here is uh, pretty unique. I would say. Okay. At least to me it is. But this is the uh, Polybius um, Quarter Arcade Machine. And, um, okay. You yeah, it's, this, it's huh? top uh, secret. You know, <laughs> so, you know, you don't know how this game plays. Um, <laughs> no, so, there, is, there, is there an actual game on this? Or is, is it like a USB hub or something? It, 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 I didn't know what it was at first. I thought it was going to be the game. But it's actually yeah. a hub. So okay. you plug all your other okay. arcades in. Yeah. And, um, Basically, it shows a display of what could have been in a way. Because yeah. when you see the display, it looks like it could have been a really <laughs> a, a good game. But um, it's just more of a charging station. It has like a bunch. I think it has like over like like maybe like 12 uh, USB ports in there. So you yeah. can charge your other arcades. Huh. But I, I still thought it was pretty cool. But but when I bought this, I thought it was going to be the real game. I had no idea it was going to be a charging station. That's the thing about this is that a lot of people are like, ooh, the game. And, you know, yeah, they're, that's and, what still would be really cool to have on your desk like at work or something oh, yeah, like definitely. that you know like charging your phone and all mm -hmm. that sort of stuff your headphones that's cool yeah yeah all right that's pretty epic okay well i'm gonna keep with that theme so a little bit smaller scale but this is the replicate of uh missile command and i like first of all i like this size mm -hmm. because we mentioned it kind of sitting on your desk that's a little bit too big for my, for a desk. I mean, you can yeah. do it for for yeah. sure. Yeah, but this I think is the perfect size. Right. You right. Know? So I love these. These are very cool. Basically, what this is that they it, it's a recreate. It's a one six scale recreation, I believe, is the size of you know the classic missile command. Notice how they have like a lens over it to oh. make it look like a CRT. Right on, dude. Yeah. Okay. So it has a kind of like a uh, a rounded lens to mm -hmm. to give it that kind of like CRT look. Uh, it has a battery. Um, you can get in there and you can mess with the dip switches and change some of the settings with it. Uh, it's got a light up marquee. It even comes like little tiny tokens. And I love Missile Command, so uh, I, I, I dig these a lot. I also have like the Dragon's Layer one. Uh, Dude, yeah, the yeah. Dragon's Layer one. And they even have a Space Ace one coming out. I know, I, I know. I'm going to be getting I missed that Space one, Ace but one that too. Dude, seriously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very, very cool. Yeah. Uh, I should probably knock this out then since I have this one. Okay. Um, Oh, just trying to be clever here. Surprises. Okay, so this is the second numbskull, like the uh, the. This is, no, this you, is the replicate. Oh, by, uh, it is replicate. Oh, yeah, this is the replicate okay. by um, a New Wave Toys. Oh, dude, I want this one. Cubert. Yeah. You missing that one? I am. That's really cool. You got it, man. This is yours. No, 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 no. You don't have to do that, of course, man. <laughs> because yeah, yeah, I got you, man. Take care oh, of really? One. This one's that. That was gonna kind of collect dust because I'm not. I never really been a Cubert guy, but oh. I did like it though. You know, yeah. I thought it was cool. But yeah, man. I got oh, you. dude, that's that's very nice of you, man. You didn't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> got you, man. So, wow. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. So, well, I, about Cubert though, was Cubert like the popular game before Pac-Man? Or was it like after Pac-Man? Boy, um, I'm trying to remember. I, I feel like Pac-Man was first. Okay. Um, but then Cubert is definitely around that era, you mm -hmm. know. And and honestly, as a kid, I was never really good at Cubert. I'm actually better at it now a little bit. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't. I'm not sure why, but but it it, it, it I think it's because it, it as a kid it kind of confused me because it's you go in a direction. You know, it, mm -hmm. it's not really 3D, but it, in my brain as a kid I didn't understand it. Yeah. You know? it, it, it's, it's kind of, for me, when I was playing it, you know, I was doing pretty well yeah. at it, but it's the isometric view, and then you're trying to figure yeah. out which ones you yeah. stepped on already. Yeah. It's like, oh, man. Yeah. And, and enemies are relentless <laughs> in this game. Like, they like feel like feel like they know where you're at at all times, so they'll be on you, so you have to really think fast in this oh, game. Oh, yeah. Keyword's so, hard, man. It's, it is. Oh, dude, well, that's really that's really nice of you. Thank yeah. you so much. Oh, cool. Well, you'll, that, start, you'll start a, like a uh, little collection of them. You, dude, you know, it's, you know it's pretty funny? I was thinking the other day that it would be cool to print out a background of, like, a, an 80s arcade in film, because yeah. they're the perfect size for, like, a 12-inch Star Wars figure because mm -hmm. yep. I always have Darth Vader playing my, you know, my, oh. <laughs> and, and my, in my uh, my other room over there. Mm -hmm. It would be kind of cool to do some photos of, you know, pretending it was like an 80s arcade, you know, definitely. Darth Vader little, hanging little, out. The lights in there and everything. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, right, they'd so be pretty nerdy. <laughs> what else you got now? Um, okay. Uh, well, I'm going to keep it new for a little while here. Okay. Another game I was very excited to pick up. This is ah, Final Fantasy wow. VII Reunion Crisis Core. Uh, or Crisis Core, blah, blah, blah. Basically, this is a remake of a PSP game that I loved when it first came out. Mm -hmm. I blew through the PSP version. The, such a cool game. And it's it's a prequel to Final Fantasy VII. Right. And this is a new updated remake or a remaster right. of it, basically. Yeah, so I heard this game got a lot, a lot of praise on the yeah. PSP, I remember. And I was 
gonna play that one a couple years ago, but now yeah. I'm happy I didn't because I can play this version of it. This is the version to play. You know, it's funny because your your mind tricks you. You think that the PSP, like back then, you know, you're like, oh, that game looks amazing, mm -hmm. and it did for the time. But when you go back and play it now, it's like it's definitely a little bit rough. Okay. This is the version to play, in my opinion. Um, and it's excellent. I mean, it's just the same kind of... The thing about it, the story's really good in here. The characters are awesome. Um, the the combat system is is real-time. Mm -hmm. But it has this really trippy... I forget what they call it. It's like the mind wave thing. It's basically like this rolling, almost like a slot machine at the top. Mm -hmm. And as, you, as it matches, you can do summons. Really? Yeah, and dude, the summons... And you do them all the time in this game. And it's like... Over the top, insane, yeah. dude. I'll, I'll show some on screen, but definitely, man. I'll, yeah, I've been really digging this. They did a great job on this. I'm really pumped for this because I, I want to play this uh, because they actually have the Final Fantasy Rebirth game that's supposed to come out this year. So I'm looking forward to playing oh, that okay. as well. So yeah, uh, play this, this one and then. And oh. it, this isn't a very long game either. It does have a lot of bonus kind of extra missions that you can do if you want and mm -hmm. extend the game. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's you know it was originally designed for the PSP, so it was right. It, that's, it, yeah. So. yeah. Shorter length. All right, right on, man. Yeah, cool, very cool. cool one. Okay, man. Um, I'm going to keep it newish here as well. Uh, this game uh, took me by surprise. This is from Red Art Games. This is Gunboard Dark Matters. Um, okay. This, oh my God, this game is so good, man. Um, this is a platform game, action platform game, where you play as a mercenary who's after these... Um, after these, uh, these, I forgot these aliens that I forgot what they did, but she's after them anyways. And the game is freaking insane. Like all the traps that happen during the levels. I mean, you'll be going through a level and all of a sudden this trap will activate and you'll be chased by a laser. And you're trying to get through these platforms. Enemies are shooting at you. This is one of those games where you have to make sure you know all the controls in the game because every button does something different. And if you forget, <laughs> if you forget something, you'll be like, oh man, you'll, you'll mess up something critical. Huh. But the game is. The game, I don't want to say it's too hard. I mean, it's on the level where, you know, if you made a mistake, it's your fault. But I want to say that um, it, it's it's very challenging, but it's a lot of fun. And mm. the music is going to keep you going. It's like this 80 synth wave music it plays. I love that stuff. And, yeah. dude, it's, it, it blew me away. They have an album coming out before it. So I was like, <laughs> oh. I got to get the album, man. So hmm. I, I would suggest everybody try this game out. It, it's a lot of fun. It's not that long, but it is tough. But I think it's most people like it. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. All right, next up for me, keep it going with the new stuff. Dude, I just realized I've got a bunch of remakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there are some good ones here. So Metroid Prime Remastered what on a surprise. Switch. Dude, have you played this? I've never played that game before. I was debating on getting it on the GameCube, oh. and now I'm kind of glad I yes. possibly didn't. Cause... So I, I originally played and beat the GameCube version, and, you know, it was amazing on the GameCube, but it also had really weird controls at the time. You get used to them, but it's it's unlike any other first-person shooter you've ever played. Right. This version here has updated graphics, mm -hmm. and they're like beautiful, um, really beautiful game. And the controls are more modern. You can, I believe, switch them to the, the, old the, the old school if you want. I think you can even use like a GameCube controller if you want, if you have like one of those that, okay. you know. But I'm playing it on a, a Switch Pro controller. I think I'm like, I think my save game is like 70 or 80% through it so mm -hmm. i'm pretty far into the game and it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant i love this game i loved it on the gamecube this is the definitive version in my opinion okay yeah so i don't think you really need to go back and play that one you can I'm gonna start with this one play this one okay uh the and i will say that they're being very faithful to the original because the original is is a type of game where you have to really pay attention or you'll be lost you'll be like where the hell do i go I don't know what to do. But the reason why I mention this is because I have a strategy guide mm -hmm. that is getting me through this game. Really? A part like I forgot. Old? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so it's very, you know, it, it, unless they change it at the very end, it's very note for note you, like the original do you ever game. Like, do you like that sense of being lost sometimes in the game, like trying to figure out where you need to go? I do. I mean, I mean well, I used to answer your well, question. Well, it's kind, of, it's kind of crazy for me because I now I've, I've become accustomed to like knowing, always knowing where to go. Yeah. Like wanting to know where to go. So if I want to take... Like, yeah. So side, you know? it's funny you mentioned that because a lot of people I think are playing this for the first time. Um, you can get frustrated because this game does not hold your hand. It will give you hints if you're taking too long. Mm -hmm. Like on the map, it'll give you like, oh, you, you, something's going off, you know, over in this area, and you want to head that direction. However, uh, because the the enemies respawn, you can end up killing the same enemy 50 times if you're going back and forth in, trying to figure out what's going on. Right, right. So that part of it is frustrating, especially for a modern gamer. You're used to having like the, the breadcrumbs that take yeah, you to your yeah, destination. Just, just in case, you know, like, you know. But 
that's part of the fun of this game is getting lost in it. And okay. so it's not too bad. But I will say, again, I have a strategy guide out for that very reason. That reason? <laughs> right on, man. Right on. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is something simple here, I would say. But um, you know, this was gifted to me by my friend uh, at a convention. This is a Resident Evil 3 uh, picture. Done um, to the to Nightmare on Elm Street. So. Yeah, yeah, done in that done in that form. Best I thought that was style. pretty cool. Resident Evil Three is my favorite out of Resident Evil series, so getting this from him was pretty awesome. I was happy with this, and uh, something to hang on the wall, you know. Hmm. Wow, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, let's see here. Next, to, okay. This is a kind of an interesting release here. Yes. Avenging Spirit. This is on the original Game Boy. And this is a brand new pressing of this from Retrobit. Mm -hmm. So this is pretty cool. It's basically like a 20 year old game that they, I think it was kind of obscure at the time, right? When it came oh, out. Very expensive. Yeah. Oh, okay. And obscure, yeah. Yeah. So they did this special release for it. It's got a really nice box. It's got a glow in the dark cartridge here. Yep. Uh, full color manual and basically the premise of this game is that you are somebody who has been killed by the mob Yep, and you want to avenge hence the, the name of uh, you know avenging spirit Yep, and the, the gimmick here is that you can possess other people yes. and get their abilities and there's like 20 different characters mm -hmm. to possess in this game really a lot of fun um, Yeah, they, they did a good job on this part of the game because it was originally an arcade game Okay, you know, so yeah, huh? Yeah, so again just kind of a I, I like how Retrobit has been doing that. It's been bringing back some of these more expensive, obscure mm -hmm. games, you know. And putting them in these nice cases like that. Really you know, nice seriously. case, doing a really good, great job. And, and kind of keeping it to like what the game originally looks like. Because if you've seen the American cover for this version of the game, you would never no. think the game. Really? It shows like a mafia dude on the cover with a, a Tommy gun. Oh. So you would never think, like, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a hilarious cover. Oh, so yeah. The cover fits the game. Totally fits the game. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, so I was happy to get that. All right, next item I got here is Young Souls. So I have to guess, does this have a vinyl record in there? It does, okay. man. It does. I was totally <laughs> it's shocked. It's the perfect about this. size. <laughs> yeah. So this is a this is a, a like a beat 'em up game, kind of similar hmm. to Castle Crashers. Oh. Yeah. You play as a twin brother and twin sister, and um, man, the game is really like it's really fun because not only is it a beat 'em up, but you can kind of like go. It's like a hub in a way. Like there's a part in the game where you're in the town, in the in, a, in the city, and you go like go around town and talk to other people and get new abilities and things like that. Hmm. It's really a lot of fun, and you go into this other world where you're trying to rescue one of your family members. And um, I don't want to tell too much of the story from that point on, but man, this game is a lot of fun. The only thing I think I would say it's missing is online support because I always figure like a beat 'em up game should oh, have like sure. online with support. More so, people, yeah. yeah, because more people yeah. will like will get into it and everything yeah. like that. But it comes with so much stuff, you know. This two records. Two wow. records, yeah. Okay, that's One cool. for each twin. So. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, I was really happy with this. So Fix and Love like put this out, and man, like, that's I, really I, I love nice. getting stuff from them. Yeah, man. that's really nice, man. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so we just got back from the, the, the Portland's Side Quest Expo yep. a couple weeks ago, and you were asking me, like, were there any big box PC games there? There was. Uh, there was actually quite a few. I only really found one that I didn't have, mm -hmm. um, but I was pretty happy to find it. It is a really cool role-playing game called Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. So this is a kind of like a top-down isometric role-playing game by the, the, the original makers of Fallout. Wow. Yeah, so the people who worked out worked on Fallout 2 actually made their own company and went and made this game, you know, back in whenever the, this came out, 2001 2001, yeah. Red yeah. Myers tag on here and everything. This is Yeah, wild, and, and published by Sierra. This was after I left. This is, um, you know, Sierra when they were just publishing other people's stuff. But mm -hmm. a really cool, you know, uh, steampunk, um, you know, RPG. Uh, right. Just one that I was really looking for for a long time. And uh, they had a really nice copy of it there. So I was very happy to... To get get it, uh, if you guys want to play it, you can find it at GOG.com. Okay, so like, yeah, so you can actually get a digital version. And I, I, because I got one the other day, I was like, mm -hmm. I wonder if GOG has this. They do. It was like three dollars. So. Dude, I just love how they went all out for the, these yeah. PC releases, like the cover here. How you like? Yeah, it's like raised. Yeah, I know, dude. and the artwork is beautiful, huh? Definitely, dude. Yeah, so pretty obscure. Okay. RPG. Right on, right on. Next up here. Oh, this is another big item. No, no game I don't dropping really stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, my memory of us uh, from Red Art Games. So I actually hmm. talked about this on the channel before, but I got the collector's edition of it. So basically, uh, Patrick Stewart 
um, is a narrator for, for the whole game. Oh, really? Yeah, it's really oh. cool. And uh, you play as uh, two, uh, like a boy and a girl, and they're going, th they're trying to like go through um, the city during World War, like a World War and everything like that. So you're like in World War Germany, and you're trying to survive. It's not like, it's more like a puzzle game, I would say. Hmm. Uh, um, it's like, um, kind of it looks like a storybook in a way. So yeah. you look at it like a storybook type game. It's kind of like that. So definitely a unique game. Uh, I think a lot of people could get into this one. Uh, I, I feel like this would have been would have did well if it got an American release as physical too. But um, oh, yeah. okay, you're right. It's a Peggy. Peggy. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, here's one I'm curious to see if you are familiar with it. It's Dicey Dungeons on the Switch. Okay. Dude, this game it's so addictive. Now I'm gonna try to describe this game. It's not gonna make any sense, but on the on the screen you'll see it's basically like a kind of like a randomized roguelike. RPG. However, what, what, the way it works is that you're on this kind of like path and you can fight people, you can open up um, uh, chests and things like that, you can buy stuff. But the way combat works in this game is so addictive because essentially what you do is you get dice mm -hmm. and you have to match those to cards that you're dealt in the middle of the screen and you either try to take damage or do power-ups or do kind of like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hardcore D&D game, right. but it's, it's using dice. It sounds lame. It's so addictive, dude. It's so much fun. It looks like one of those games that will probably pull you in. You really know? did. Like, I've put hours into this game. It, it's actually, I want to say it's like one of the, the Switch games I was the most surprised by. Yeah? In, in recent memory, I was like, yeah. I, I, not to overhype it, but, <laughs> dude, I, was, I, I think this game's super fun. It's like uh, kind of whimsical and silly, but also like hardcore RPG. So... I like the cover of it. Yeah, it yeah. Cool. Yeah, I know. It's it, like, again, total surprise, but I, I, I dig that game a lot. Okay, um, I have to unwrap this a little bit. I got it all protected. Hmm. But um, I did a review on cotton uh, a while back, and a Strictly Limited has Dude. sent me this cotton uh, fantasy collection. Man, every version of cotton. You're, you're like a... You must have the most epic cotton collection at this I'm, point. I'm trying to get there because these games are actually a lot of fun. Yeah. What? What is Is this a... That's like the teacup. Um, so oh, 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 okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, the Cotton Fantasy game uh, came out, I want to say, about, about a year ago, I would say. And a lot of people are, are liking the series from that one. You know, a lot of people, like a new, newcomers, have tried it out and they really enjoyed it. And as you can see, this comes with a lot of stuff. So... I was really happy because they, they really liked the review I did for it, so they were happy to send me that, so I'm happy. Well, you're such a fan of the series. I mean, it's easy for you, right? Yeah, it's like, yeah. I, I mean, I just went those in. are the best kind, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Wow, dude. Yeah, your cotton collection is not a joke. <laughs> you should do a video just on, like, that at some point, just, like, all the crazy versions yeah. of it. Yeah, there's a couple more I want to get, so, yeah, that, that's the that's idea I had to do it, so. Hmm. All right, well, for me, I'm going to keep going. Like I said, I've got a bunch of HD remakes, remasters. This is I, I didn't plan this. So, Dead Space, the original, remade. Yes. Dude, I, I, I man, I almost bought it, man. but it was, You didn't? I didn't, man, because the $70 price tag oh, threw me off. Yeah, I that's do. true. I, I did pay a full like, $70 for this. Man. I know. <laughs> but I am such a fan of, especially the first two Dead Space games, and what I heard about this, and turned out to be true, is that they've made some really great changes to this to make it more playable. Mm -hmm. Did you play the original back in the day? All three. Okay, so the thing, the one of the more annoying things about the original game was how it handled the the zero G stuff when you're floating and stuff mm -hmm. like that. That's completely fixed in this. Really? Okay. Completely. This is way more enjoyable, you okay. know. Um, the graphics are beautiful. Just everything about this, this is the definitive version of the game. It's so, awesome. Playing this version of the game, you know, was everything pretty much uh, the same that from you remember from the first game when it comes to scares and stuff like that? Yeah, well, yes. I mean, it, and to be fair, I haven't played the original since it came out, so okay. it, my, my brain's a little bit fuzzy on that. So. Yeah, it was a while ago. That was 2008 when that came out. So yeah, wow. yeah. And, and, <laughs> wow. But um, I, I did read, though, and I don't know how true it is, but that they do have a system in place in this game where... It, it will give you scares mm. at random points or if it thinks that it's been too long since you've had one. So something like blow up or some kind of weird sound Some effect. sort of like AI in the game where, where they'll, they'll throw, you know, someone will bust through a ceiling or something like that oh, God. in random ways. <laughs> I know, I know. And But it doesn't seem like it's overused in my opinion. I'm pretty far into this game. Um, 
So yeah, I don't know. I mean, again, in my opinion, I think this is the definitive version. Looks and runs great on the Xbox Series X. You're in 4K. You've got all the visual stuff turned on. It's, mm -hmm. it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Maybe when I'm done, you can borrow it. Yeah, well, I, no, uh, no, no Xbox. You don't have an Xbox? <laughs> yeah, someday. But no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next game here, it's another Picks and Love game. This okay. is Windjammers Collection. Oh. Dude. <laughs> Windjammers. Dude, I, I had never played that the series before. They're, they're fun, aren't they? Dude, they are super fun. I made the mistake of uh, playing part two first, because part two has a lot more features than mm. the first one does, and I got beat up pretty bad, but you know, I was I was still pumped up. I went back and played the first one, got used to the mechanics, and I, I beat that one, but part two really steps it up, man. You have to be on your toes, but the games are so addicting. Yeah. You know, you're, the, the, the characters you fight, like you go against in this game, man, they, they, they have some crazy moves that you have to get used to. But once you start to get a feel for the game and know how to move your character around properly, uh, you'll do well. But um, it's very competitive. Huh. Man, that's a nice box. Dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. All right. Next up for me, just uh, I'm a, a random game. I thought it was kind of interesting is Attack of the Movies 3D on the Xbox 360. I didn't know that came out with 360. I have it on the Wii. Dude, wow. have, have you played this with 3D glasses on? No, I have not. Mine's missing the 3D glasses. It's but... hilarious. Really? Let me see that. <laughs> For the footage I captured, you guys, I did have that on. This looks hilarious. It was pretty funny, but basically it's an on-rail shooter. It, and its whole gimmick is that it goes through different kind of genres of movies. Movies, yeah. Yeah, and then you can play it with or without the 3D glasses. <laughs> wow, dude. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah. And, and also, too, the fact that it has a lenticular cover. Mm -hmm. So, again, to kind of show off that 3D. Silly little Xbox 360 game, but I was surprised to see it, so I had to pick it up. Okay, right on. Man. Yeah. Another one I got here from Project Retro Games. Oh. Police Nuts, also known as Police Cops. No, I was kidding. I always call it Police Cops, a silly afterthought <laughs> name. But uh, this is like a Hideo Kojima's, one of his uh, finer games, I would say. Yeah. It's a visual novel where you play as a detective, and um, it's just, yeah, pretty much a visual novel game uh, that never came out to America. Like, fan translated it. And uh, now um, the company actually put this on a disc. So, so wow, they even like printed. Yeah. Wow, that's a really nice looking disc, actually. Is it on black too? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> they went all out. They 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 go all out with all their projects. So huh. yeah, it's it's a, it's a good company to keep up with, guys. Uh, now, just to let everybody know, uh, since these are like after after the PS One is, is done, like the the PS One has this uh, wobble effect. That detects like if games are real or not. Oh. Since no one actually replicated that, that you know, most people just modded their systems just to bypass that. So oh, games okay. that come out now for the PS One, which there are some other ones, um, you have to have a mod system to play it. But um, oh okay, but it's easy to do. So yeah, interesting. Wow, that looks really. That's a really nice like case too. Yeah, it re you know represents the old school, yeah. like the long box PS One. Because I used to love these. You yeah. Know? Oh, I know the, the long boxes were awesome. Okay, uh, next up for me, oh boy, I don't know how to pronounce this. Let me see. M it, you Mir try. Miramasa? No, Mir... Oh, <laughs> you know what I call this? <laughs> Bug Princess. Because that's that, the English name for it. That's the English name for it. So, uh, Limited Run, I, I believe, did this one. But, so, they announced this, I, it was maybe like a year ago. I immediately bought it because this is one of my favorite shoot 'em ups ever. It's a cave game, cave bolt hell shooter. It's it's mm -hmm. called Bug Princess. Originally played on the iPad. They had Bug, Bug Princess one and two. Mm -hmm. This is the physical version for the Switch. It was just it was a game I had to own. Yeah, I was I was I was amazed that they were actually doing it because it's a pretty obscure, you know. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have I have this game on the PS2 uh, as an import. What, um, oh, what was it called? Was it called? Was it the same name? Same name, but it's really, just, you know, it's just something I don't really pronounce. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about it right now. Hmm. Mushihim Sama. Sure. <laughs> yeah, you guys. It's not a princess. Guess. <laughs> but anyways, it, it was a uh, yeah, a game I I had to have played it, beat it, love this game. So right on. Yep. Okay. Um, here is Chaos Code, a new sign of catastrophe for the Nintendo Switch. So this is a 2D. Now I'm looking at the cover, this is a collector's edition cover. It looks you, naughty. I know you wouldn't even be able to tell this is a fighting game. Oh, but, um, okay. It's a 2D fighting game that I've I've been following for years. It actually came out on the PS3 uh, on the on the network back in mm. 2013. 
now it's finally got a physical release. Uh, it's a great 2D uh, fighting game that I don't think a lot of people know about or really talk about. Oh, that's and pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it comes with a lot of cool stuff here. Um, very happy this got a physical release from Play Asia, and as soon as I saw it, I had to pick it up. Um, when it comes to fighting games, I'm more into the games that are like 2D sprites. Mm -hmm. I just feel like those are just my type of games, you know. Yeah. So, uh, as soon as I saw that, I had to pick it up. But if you guys see it out there, you know, if you like fighting games, I would say definitely give this one a try. And it's got a nice cover. Yeah, it's got a nice cover too. <laughs> All right, next up for me is a game I'm curious to know if you've heard of it called Rain on Your Parade. I heard of this one. So. Dude, I think it was Riggs that was talking about this at one Oh, really? Point. Yeah, yeah. So this is a game where you play as a mischievous cloud mm -hmm. that is trying to rain on everyone's parade, basically ruin their day. Oh, wow. And essentially what it is is that you go around and you control the cloud and you drop rain and you know, on, and you'll have different things that you have to like different sort of uh, objectives. You know what that reminds me of? Hmm. That cloud in Super Mario Brothers. That yes. Like, that was just yeah, like yeah. that. Like made the level worse. You know? Wow. But, but what's interesting about this game is that you do get power ups in different kinds of level. It's it's clever because the, like for instance, there's there's one where you're in this like warehouse or something like that, and you pick up oil, and mm -hmm. so you'll be like trying. So you'll 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 try to start fires with the by raining down oil and creating a path. Wow. To, to of destruction. Okay. So it gets really creative. Another game I was really addicted to when I first got this. It's a it's pretty fun. So okay. it's cool that I got like a you know limited or it's, it's a premium edition. It's the people who, who put it out, but right. it's like a special edition of it. So I love how like everybody's like running away from the cloud. And yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You basically try to ruin everybody's day in it. It's pretty funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> okay. Um. Next up here, uh, this uh, was waiting for me at my doorstep when I got back from Portland and mm. Side Quest Games. This is Crisis Wing. That looks like a shooter. It is a shooter. Okay. And um, man, is it, it this mm. game, I played it briefly before and uh, it was one of those games I got my platinum on and then I tried to play it again and I just, I got beat up bad. I, I, I couldn't even get past the first level, but man. My skills have diminished a lot, man. So I got to practice one, this one a bit more. It's a lot of fun, but what 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 I really like about the game is the music. Um, there's a part in the game where you play the the, the time attack mode, hmm. and the music for the time attack mode is so good. I was like, man, it just kept me kept me going. But it's definitely a, a cool shooter that a lot of people I think would like want to play. Um, I believe this is exclusive at Video Games New York that they had. So um, if you guys want to pick it up, you might want to check them out. But um, yeah, shooters, you know, anytime I see, yeah. Oh, when I see them on physical, I know they're good. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? so, that's true. Well, I think there's so a lot of shooters out there on physical, especially some of these arcade games too, where it's like you know, for, for some of these that that they put out, you were only able to get play them in the arcades, right? Mm. So it's cool to kind of get you know, especially like these cave shooters, right? They originally yeah. came out in the arcades. So. Yep. Huh. All right. Ne oh well. Okay. Speaking of which, <laughs> <laughs> dude, it's so funny. Yeah, I didn't plan this. So. Uh, I almost, almost picked that up. Yeah, yeah. So this is one I originally found, I believe, in Japan for the Xbox 360 because mm -hmm. they got a physical then. It was the only physical I'd ever seen. I had to, it, it, It's in Japanese, so I had to write it down. Akai Katana Shin. Mm -hmm. And basically, this is a, another cave bullet hell style shooter. Uh, this one is horizontal. Yep. So... Um, and again, just another game. I love the cave shooters because there's so much going on. But also, a lot of the enemies die quickly mm -hmm. and so you just feel like you're just kind of like mowing the lawn you know what i mean you're just Good. like cutting down blades of grass man mm -hmm. so super fun game really addictive the cover you would never be able to tell it was a shooter i you know, know I, yeah it looks like an rpg or like a visual a novel, novel exactly. or rpg yeah so but when play asia announced that they, this is going to be one i yeah. i jumped on it immediately yep. and just so, let everybody know the game plays in english so. yeah it does yep. even though everything here is in in japanese but uh, I couldn't buy this fast enough. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. Man. Next one here, uh, I got this from my good friends at Retrobit. Nice, nice. And this is Battletoads and Double Dragon for the NES. Um, not only did they bring this game back, but they put it in a in a in a case. Yeah. That just like this 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 green case that looks really fantastic. I was really impressed with that. So. Um, I, I like like you were saying earlier. I mean, I love how they're they're bringing back a lot of these games, yeah. you know, and yeah. bringing them back in like these collector's edition that look really like outstanding. Because when you open this up, you can see it's like 
you guys are seeing the box box right now. It's just mm-hmm. like, man, they just put a lot of effort into it, and I, I really appreciate it. This is the more sought after a uh, game from the Battletoads and Double Dragon games because it was released on NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, and the Game Boy. Maybe the Game Boy one's more sought after one. I don't know, but uh, the NES one is a lot the one that a lot of people were going after, and it was very expensive. So glad they brought this one out, you yeah. know, for people who wanted that game. And you can tell, I mean, it's designed for collectors, but right? it comes with a display stand. Yep. Huh. Yeah. That that back in the day that was the ultimate team, you know, Battletoads and Double Dragons together. You know, that, that was like Didn't you do a dedicated video on this game? I think you did like a let's play or something, didn't yeah, you? I did. I did something like that. I think yeah. it was like more just like just kinda of like a review, I think. Yeah, so. okay. I remember seeing that. I was yeah. like, Oh, cool. Huh. All right, very cool. All right, next up for me is two games that are unopened. Ah. Very unusual for me. And and there's a good reason for that. So uh super rare. Is a company that puts out a lot of you know physical versions. Mm-hmm. They put out two games that I. The reason why these are unopened is because I already played them. I had them digitally forever. Oh, really? okay, okay. <laughs> but they came out with the physical versions of uh, Fast RMX, a super awesome racing game on the Switch. A really, it looks early like an F Zero type. It, it is very okay. much so. Oh, wow. and, um, and and I mean, this came out early years in the Switch. Okay. So I, I've owned this digitally forever. And I was amazed that they did a physical version of it. I was like, I have to own that. So, okay. um, yeah. So no real reason to open it. <laughs> I don't know. I feel a little guilty, but I'm not. Gonna, I'm never going to sell it. I was so excited to own it. So, right. uh, and then another one that also I've owned for a while is called The Tourist. I played this recently. Uh, so well, good, isn't it? Yeah. I was I was thrown off in the beginning, but once I started figuring things out, I was like, yeah, this yeah. game is actually pretty cool. Yeah. So it's like a. Um, I mean, it looks, I guess, kind of Minecrafty a little bit. You know, yeah, like exactly. Lego. Oh yeah. And uh, it's it's a uh, it's a puzzle game essentially, mm-hmm. with a really cool perspective, like that kind of. Uh, it's not a forced perspective. Maybe that's what it is called, but basically just a really interesting look to it. Mm-hmm. Um, fantastic game. So. It, was, it was cool. As, as you get further in the game, you unlock, uh, you go to this arcade and you unlock these games, uh, these these racing games. I remember and there's another one too. And they look like PS1 games, which is really, really cool. Yeah. So I was like, man, I, I like games that have games. Yeah, yeah, I'm a sucker too, for so. that too. Pretty cool. So yeah, this is one of those games that, that deserves a physical release and I'm glad yeah, that it's both rare. Of Made Both it happen. Things. Yeah, definitely, man. Right on. Yeah. Hope you guys are ready for this one. I am. Super rare survival horror game, Heaven Dust Collection. This is huh. this, this is an isometric survival horror game. Oh, okay. This game is awesome. Is it? it? It's definitely, it took cues from the original Resident Evil. You know, you wake up in a laboratory, you're in this mansion trying to survive these zombies, and, and you're trying to figure out the story of what happened. It is so cool. I mean, I just got the the whole vibe from the original Resident Evil, which I hadn't felt in a long time. You know, this game is freaking great. And uh, like I said, if you're a survival horror fan, uh, I would say definitely pick this up. And the second game, I haven't got into that one yet because I haven't beat the first one yet. I believe I'm pretty close, but um, uh, I hear the second game just amps things up even further than hmm. the first game. So it look, it, the second game looks more action oriented because you, you see he's holding the gun like that. But, okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Definitely something cool from them. It's cool they put multiple games on here. Oh, yeah, definitely. Huh. You know. Survival horror. All yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, now for something completely different. <laughs> the Atari 50th anniversary Whoa. celebration. Are we at 50 with that? Wow. I know. I know. <laughs> so I picked this up a while ago. Uh, it, the moment it came out, because I'm such an Atari fan. But uh, this is the Xbox One and Series X version. Basically what this is, is an interactive... Um, celebration of uh, everything Atari from from the so, consoles to the handhelds to the computers mm-hmm. to the developers to the games it's amazing so all that's like included so does it have like a hub like an arcade hub that you go, you have a character walk into like kind of like Pac-Man no ended? it it it's definitely flat it's it's like okay. a menu system but it's interactive and so basically what you end up doing is kind of going down these rabbit holes mm-hmm. of developer interview like first of all you, it, it depends on you can you can change and sort how you want to look at this game mm-hmm. if you just want to go chronological Logically, you can do that if you want to just like pick the Atari, like the VCS or the, the twenty six hundred. Then it branches off from there, and you'll you can watch developer interviews. You can play the games. Um, it also has some new stuff on here as well. So it has really? new new versions of older games. It's new, cool. New version of Hero? Uh, no, because <laughs> <laughs> because Hero was an Activision game. It oh, was for okay. the Atari. Okay. I know, I know, okay. I know. That is the one thing about collecting Atari. I always have to tell people, like, 
a lot of my favorite games actually were made by Activision for mm -hmm. the Atari, but but needless to say, though, there's still a lot of classic games on here for sure. Okay. And again, it's not just for the Atari 2600, it's for the Jaguar, it's for the it's for their home computers, it's mm -hmm. for everything. It's for the 7800, the 5200, it's all it's all in here. Okay. It's pretty cool. Hmm, interesting. I might, I might yeah, yeah, at least check it out. So. Let's see. Okay. Um, next one here. Finally, happy this game got a physical release because mm. I was going to play it until it did. It took three years or maybe four years. Yeah. But here is Cuphead. Dude, so Cuphead is a, a shooter, running gun shooter. Yeah. And, um, Notoriously I, I, difficult. It is. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Like, I was yeah. like, dude, like, this is taking too long to beat this one this one boss I was fighting. Yeah. Um, But it's fun. I mean, it's just, I think what I mostly appreciate appreciate about the game is how it looks. You oh, know, the, the art style. Yeah, the amazing. art style is amazing yeah. for me. So that, that's yeah. that's one of the things that was impressive to me. That's what kind of keeps me playing and want to see more. But man, it's tough. You know, this is. I wish they had an online mode so you could play with someone else, you know, <laughs> get some help with it or something. But um, yeah, no, the the art style in this is a lot. And like, I mean, it looks like those old 1920s, 1930s. You know, movies that they or the the, the cartoons that they would mm -hmm. animate from back in the day, like yeah. Steamboat Willie and all that stuff. Exactly. You know, exactly. And also, too, if you guys decide to pick up the physical version of this game, it actually comes with a DLC embedded on the disc as mm -hmm. well. So, so let people know that. Hmm. Yeah. You're braver than me. <laughs> <laughs> I can appreciate it. I just know my limits. I'm like, oh, yeah, man. It, it's, it's 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 yeah yeah tough. Yeah. That's cool though. All right. Um, let's see here. Well. I, I have a little bit of a gift for you. I actually have several. So really? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I know you're shocked. I'm like, so <laughs> I wanted to give you these because recently I did a bunch of reviews of uh, um, like really high quality homebrew oh. games for the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Dude. Boy Advance. Yeah, so those are all for you, buddy. Fist yeah. Bump. I know. <laughs> oh, so, man. Heck yeah. Yeah, because I, I mean, I've seen, I've vaguely seen some of these before. Yeah, they're all really high quality. And so, you, you know, Reggie's a huge Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance collector. And, dude, I, and, dude, I see that these guys might have to take a break, man. I'm so yeah. overwhelmed right now. <laughs> and, I, I, and, and again, some of these aren't even like survival horror. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so. Dude, I, I, I love the Game Boy system. You know, yeah. Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. Like, I, I'm still collecting it for that system to this day. Yeah. Uh, Wow, this is use... stuff you don't normally see. So exactly, man, dude, yeah. this is all. Thank you so much, dude. This is sick, dude. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's see here. Let me grab this game. So, I recently got this game, and uh, people had told me it was very similar to games like Banjo Kazooie, mm. uh, Ratchet and Clank, and this is oh, like really? Clive and Wrench. Dude, I've never heard of this. I yeah, love this. Yeah, this just came out, man, and this is such a this is a three D platformer. Hmm. It's a throwback to games like that, you know. I was like, dude, like in when I was playing it, gosh, it is it's like a time capsule in a way, and it really takes you back to a lot of the fun 3D platformers out there. And this game, like when you're on a level, I just wanted to collect everything, like make sure I like I got everything oh, I needed. Dude. Like, I you know, to get just, a copy of this. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a, a lot of fun, hmm. man. And um man, I'm looking forward to getting further in the game. Cause I just recently got it, so I haven't got that far. But the, yeah. the first world I went to was like a honey I shrunk the kids level. Oh, okay. And it was it was freaking hilarious, man. I was like, dude, this is great. Uh, it's nice to see developers still making games like this. Yeah. And um Well they, they call these kind of like a three D platforming collectathons, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I love those. I mean right, right. just trying to find every little like when you mentioned Ratchet and Clank, you know, I will search every single nook and cranny yeah, it, of that it, game. It's fun to yeah, do. It is. It you is know, fun. It's fun. You, I mean, you could do your regular requirements, get past the level, but I just wanted to get everything. You yeah. know, like, you know, it's just... Clive and Ren. So, so freaking cool, man. Never heard of that before. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's, let's do this one right here. Uh, full disclosure, this was sent to me uh, by the people who did this. So it's basically the physical versions of ah, possibly yes. the last <laughs> PlayStation 3 games to be released. Yep. <laughs> uh, so V Blank Entertainment, Retro City Rampage DX, yep. and Shakedown Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So they they also, I think, probably did the very last Wii release too. They did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they did. So mm -hmm. they, they did them on the, the place. Again, who is releasing brand new PlayStation 3 physical games these it's, days? The PS3 Nobody. is almost 20 years old now. It came out in 2006, so and to still get a new game for it? Like, I know, I know. So they, they were like, this needs to be in your collection. And I love the fact that they even did an action figure yeah that's so i know cool. so i thought this was really really cool these are top down 
kind of almost like the original Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, it know? is definitely reminiscent of that game. You know, it's it's wild and it's yeah. a lot of it's very story driven as well. And yeah. there's a lot of stuff you could do in this game. It, it's just really a throwback to like older times, I would say. Yeah, and I think a lot of people will appreciate it. So yeah, gonna play it. So thank you guys for sending this. That was really cool of you. Appreciate it. All right, um, you're gonna love this. <laughs> okay, I think you will. I think you guys will appreciate. All it. right. This is a silent scope rifle oh. for the Xbox. It comes with silent The original scope. Xbox. Yes, dude. So I saw that there. So, okay, so here's a funny story. So back in the day when I first moved to Washington, me and my buddy Emilio, uh, we went to Game Crazy and we bought this. We were like, oh, man, we get to play this. This is great. And uh, when we took it home, it didn't work. We were like, what's going on here? You know? Dude, it says HD TV compatible. It does say that. How the but, hell does that work? Yeah, I know, right? But we, I had back then. I just got a flat screen mm. television, that technology. And when we tried to play it on a flat screen, it would not detect anything. I and wonder if it's referring to like the very first HD televisions that would technically be like projection, maybe or something. I, I'm thinking so because of, on, the, on the one huh. we tried out back in the day, it would not detect anything. Yeah, I can't imagine. How thought it was. it was broken, but then when well, years later, when we figured out what was wrong, you know, you had to play on a CRT television. Yeah, you know. I decided to pick it up again and uh, uh, the show. Okay, so it does say on the site here, not it does not support all displays, not compatible with, with LCD monitors or projection TVs. What the heck? Weird. Yeah, very weird. But then on the back, it does say HD TV compatible. Look, all, all I can say is it's Pelican yeah. is a publisher, so take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> you know, they're all over the place. That's <laughs> so, true. <laughs> so... Um, but I'm happy to have it as, oh, yeah. as a novelty as well. In the box. In the box, man. Cause, yeah. Because <laughs> um, next time we do a, a pick us, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring something pretty cool that's going to be very similar to this. Really? Um, yeah. You know, we could actually play it on that television over there, though. Yeah. <laughs> give, give it a whirl. I know. That's cool, <laughs> dude. All right. We'll set that right there. All right. Uh, I just have it like... Well, I'm... I'm, I'm so I... We, often we mention on these pickups um, that, that we follow a really cool... Facebook group, and they sent us some t-shirts. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, because they, 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 they appreciate us giving them the shout-out. So it's the Switch Physical Game Hunters. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. Right on. So one of them's for you, one of them's okay. for me, so we can rock their merch. Heck yeah. Yeah. Again, we show a lot of Switch games, and we've mentioned this before, but um, we I certainly hear about a lot of these in this Facebook forum. And so if you are a physical Switch collector, mm -hmm. you should be a part of this You group. should be, because they go into detail. They're very oh. dedicated. They're very polite. It's, it's, a, it's a very good form. It is. Yeah. There, there's, I don't think there's any drama in it at no. all. It's I, really nice. Any. And it's they're just super cool people. They're very helpful. And I believe they even do trades. So if you're, you know, I mean, it, it's such an active group. Yeah. So. Definitely right on. Yeah, so enjoy the shirt, dude. I yeah, got one yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to wear it in the next video. All right, cool. Right on, man. And then I have only one more. Okay. But me, it's a good one. I'll do one more as well. Okay. Um, well, actually two more. Uh, but they're together. Okay. Got this in Portland as well. Mega Man X 15th Anniversary Action Figures. Um, Whoa. <laughs> one of the sellers there, uh, his name was Court. He talked to me in a vine. He said, man, what do you think of this? I was like, dude. I almost walked away from it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It, it, the more he kept talking to me, I said, dude, I should go ahead and grab it now. Because I love the Mega Man X series. I always have. That's my favorite Mega Man series. And just the CDs, you know, I, I said, you know what? These got to go home with me. So uh, wow, they're, they're still too. sealed. I'm not, I probably, well, I'll maybe take them out of the box one day. You know I'm, what? They may be the perfect size to put in front of one of these. The arcade, arcade. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that, too. So, uh yeah, um, there's one more I'm going to try to get uh, for him. There's like a vial on the back of mm. one of the characters in the game. I'm going to try to get him. And that'll be, I'll be good from good from that point on. But it was funny when he was trying to sell it to me. I said, man, is this, is this the price? Yeah, $10? Because there's a KB <laughs> Toy Story price tag on his $9, $10. I was like, dude, that, that's the Sold? price? Yeah. <laughs> but he was really cool. Um, you know, I did a little trade with him, too, to kind of soften the price. Good. And, um, yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay, cool that's dude. cool. We're running out of room here. All right. Yeah, we are. <laughs> so um, I just have one sort of thing to show here. Um, you know, sometimes people reach out to us who either want to donate something or, or you know, give, send something for a good home. Right. And, and a, a viewer of the channel, his name's Terrence, lives in Hawaii, was like, dude, I live in a small apartment. I'm going to throw this stuff out. Uh, it, yeah. And so he, he's like, do you want it? And, and, and to, be, to be honest, guys, 
when somebody reaches out to me and I think they have something of value, I will tell them, like, dude, you could possibly sell this on eBay or something like that. But I think it's because it was broken and because he had kind of odds and ends. He's like, dude, I, it's going in the trash. You want to feel it? Yeah. So he sent me a box of stuff that you and I are going to kind of go through. Yeah? Yeah. All <laughs> right. Um, yes. <laughs> and he also sent me something I never thought I'd own. So, so the box in here has a bunch of game and watches. What? Yeah. Oh my god, I'm about to pass out. Yeah. <laughs> and you just mentioned Mega Man. Mm -hmm. So he's got Mega Man 5 in here. Um, but you notice that he's got these... So, there you go! Nice! So, oh, that's in the club! So he sent this broken to me, mm -hmm. and thankfully, Cody was able to fix it. So Cody oh, was able nice, to... Dude. So he says on the top here, he uh, replaced a gear in the CD-ROM, he, he, he uh, reconnected the RF plug, he cleaned and tested it, and he also put a new power supply into this thing. And it's fully complete, and it works Dude, perfectly. You have the, and you have the CD attachment, man. That's there, the thing. It, 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 yeah, dude. and a stack full of games. Right on, So, uh, Terrence... <laughs> yeah, dude. And he was very cool. He wrote me a really sweet letter, and he was like, he's like, I just want to see it in your game room. He's like, I know you'll play it. I, I have, like, a television over there. Ready to go, yep. Ready to go, you know. <laughs> so, and again, thank you. Shout out to Cody and Pink Gorilla and his team there. They completely cleaned it, fixed it, got it working. I played it the other day. It's flawless. You know, that's the place I should have dropped that, uh, the, the, the broken PS2 I got recently. Maybe Cody could fix it. So. Cody, Cody and his team can fix anything, because they also fixed the, uh, the Panasonic Q, which never came out here. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah, dude. I mean, he fixed, he, they can fix anything. Perfect. Yeah, so they're really, really, yeah. So anyways, Terrence, this is amazing. That's an incredible gift. So I want yeah. to, yeah, thank you so much, dude. Right on, dude. Yeah, that's, that's so you, awesome. yeah so you and I are going to go through okay, it. We'll, 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 we'll divvy that up. So. Wow, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, Whew. Do you, do you have anything else you want to... I, that is about it okay. for this one. I think, you know... Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's the thing. Is it, it's been a while since we've done this, so yeah. we probably will do a second pickups video sooner than later. Yeah, so maybe, maybe even a third. Maybe a third? Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Well, we could get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, you are on a march to 100,000 subscribers. So where can people find you on the internet and get you to 100,000 subscribers? Oh, Radical Reggie. Um, yeah, we're almost there. It's so, it's, it's so unbelievable because, you know, doing this part-time, I never thought I would get there. You know, and I had a goal of getting to 30,000, made that pretty easy, and now I'm close to 100,000. So yeah, you can find me there. I try to drop a video once a week, Yeah, sometimes. You're really consistent, week. honestly. Yeah. You're very consistent with your videos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I, yeah, I appreciate the sub. You yeah, know, give really me a sub. If you're not subbed to Reggie, go sub right now. <laughs> yeah, help me get to that goal. Yeah, that'd be really cool, guys. All right, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing, and take care.